Larry, this 2017 season has given us enough thrills to last a lifetime, and now only one game remains, and it's the one we've all been waiting for as EA Sports is proud to welcome you to coverage of Super Bowl 52 from two-year-old U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Tonight, it's all on the line. We play for the Lombardi Trophy. Alongside my good friend Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. We are honored to be here for the biggest spectacle in sports, the Super Bowl. Are you ready, partner? I am more than ready, and I love the word you used, honored, because it is an honor to be here. It's a privilege to be here. My excitement is just about to burst through the booth. I can't wait to do this. Well, and sitting with both of these teams and talking in the meetings and media day and all the hoopla that goes into this, there was one common theme. They're ready to stop the talking and start playing football. Yeah, they were probably ready a while ago. Now they can just focus on it. It's done. The only talking they have to worry about now is post-game, and they hope that they'll be talking as the winning team. And we'll see. You know both sides come in with a game plan to start. We'll see how the adjustments are made throughout because there are always adjustments in this game. I want to see if they come out conservative, trying to minimize errors, or if they have enough confidence to attack early and try and take advantage of the other team's nervousness. Well over 100 million people watching around the world. Welcome to you all. Super Bowl 52 underway from Minneapolis. Now Deion Lewis to return. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Well, with a win over Tennessee, it was another record for Tom Brady, who takes the field with the rest of that Pats offense. Brady now the oldest to both start and win a playoff game, breaking the mark set by Brett Favre a few years back. I mean, we can go all day with different records that he has set. How about this one? 251 passes in his last five playoff games, the most by any quarterback over a five-game span. How about that? And playing in his 36th postseason game ever, and now he'll look forward to number 37, and I'm sure he has an eye on 38 as well. How about that? 36 postseason games? Yeah. The equivalent of two full NFL seasons plus playoffs? <laughs> Unbelievable. They go play action here on first down. And his first pass is incomplete. His tight end, Dwayne Allen, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. And we roll now on the offensive starters. And everybody always loves to talk about Brock. And wouldn't a lot of teams love to redraft right now? This guy went in the second round. Yet no matter what, you've got a game plan for him when you're opposing him. Second down now after the incompletion. Now a former fifth-round pick of the Eagles. This is Deion Lewis. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. Starting lineup here for the Eagles on defense. A crew Charles at all season, including the playoffs, has not allowed a point in the final two minutes of a game. Really? Yeah. Because that was really put to the test by Atlanta. It was. I mean, they had their shots, didn't they? Inside the 10, first down to 10, first and goal, I guess is what it was. And how about that last pass in the end zone to Julio Jones? Did you really truly expect him to come up with the ball? Because I did. You did. I didn't. I felt like it was Philly's magic. They, they believed they were underdogs, and they believed they could do it, and they did. I think what would have been really interesting, if he caught it, would he have come down and bounced? Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on on that last play. Philadelphia made the whole thing stand up. Goes underneath here to White. And he showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be fourth down. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range 
What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here? You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. On fourth down on now is the lefty Ryan Allen to punt. A spin. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Out come the Philadelphia Eagles. Of course, they're gearing up for the NFC Championship game. And here's a stat for you that's kind of random. Nick Foles, first NFL quarterback in 20 years to start and win a playoff game after making three starts or less during the regular season. I think Randall Cunningham was the last one. He did that for the Vikings against the Giants in 1997. Randall Cunningham, of course, a former Eagle himself. That's a stunning statistic because when you hear that, you think that guy can't possibly be ready. And Nick Foles was 23 of 30 throwing the football against Atlanta and helped his team win a big one at home. Now it's the Boise State alum, Jay Ajayi. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks. That old line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Here's Foles. The connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback that has to slide and find open space to throw. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And this O-line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. And on the defensive side, starting lineup here for New England, a group that was much maligned earlier in the year, but they're coming alive when it matters. Are they ever? Now think about this. The last 12 games of the season, prior to the playoffs, they'd only given up 20 or more points twice. But they really got it together against the Tennessee Titans in the first round, didn't they? Or excuse me, in the divisional in round. In the divisional round. They sacked Mariota eight times. Eight times. One of the most elusive quarterbacks, one of the best runners in the league at his position. They corralled him eight times. That was the most in a playoff game in nearly a quarter century. Now Foles. And this is going to be incomplete. Now Jake Elliott for the field goal try. This from 54 yards away. And 
And this one is no good. He missed it. And this will remain a scoreless game. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Now this offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. They'll start things on first down with Deion Lewis. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Give him 15 yards on that one, and New England has a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now a play fake here on first down. It's caught left side by Cooks. And he is taken down deep in Philadelphia territory. Give him 30 yards there. I've got to make sure that I don't take Tom Brady's greatness for granted, that we make it routine. How about that throw right there? Yeah. Another, another great completion. And you know one area where he honed his throwing? He was a catcher in high school. He was actually drafted by the Expos in 1995 in the 18th round. Wow, that would have been something to see him behind the dish. Think he gunned down a few guys? Gunned down a few guys trying to steal second. That would have been fun to watch. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. First and ten, here's Brady. And did he get the feet down? No, they'll say he did not. It's incomplete. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after. That'll bring up second down. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a nice pick up there as he'll take it from the 10 down to the 5-yard line. When you look at the geography we're staring at, this part of the field, don't you always think of big backs carrying the football, bruisers trying to pound it in? Instead, look at a little more of a scat back type, and he's trying to make it happen. Yeah, they went with the elusive, slippery guy. Couldn't get in there, though. Gronkowski, slot left. Brady now on third and goal. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Call it a one-yard gain of the play. And that will bring up an interesting decision here on fourth and goal. So on fourth down, Brady will yield to Goskowski for the field goal try. From the left hash, a chip shot here. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and the Patriots jump out to a 3-0 lead. So give them three there. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they couldn't punch it in. And credit this defense, too. That was the old bend-but-don't-break approach, but it kept the offense out of the end zone.
Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. On the return, it's Kenyon Barner. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Now before this next series gets going here offensively, what about that Saints-Vikings game? There's so many different ways we can go and so many comments we can start with, but I hope you don't mind me starting with this one. Never in the history of the NFL, all right, did we ever think that Drew Brees could lead a team that scores and leaves just 29 seconds on the clock, and he left too much time for Case Keenum. For Case Keenum. Think about that. Yeah. All and right? Just the end of that game, you know, we say it all the time, but you, you live for those moments. Now, you also got to remember, for the Saints, and we're, we're thinking about the Vikings, for the Saints, what heartbreak. Heartbreak for Marcus Williams, especially the safety. People are going to identify yeah. him as the key. But there's one thing to keep in mind. Kyle Rudolph, the tight end for the Vikings, ran about a seven-yard route, and someone from the Saints defense jumped him and actually weakened the back end of that defense and left it in a two-on-two -two situation, and the Vikings took advantage of it. One we'll be talking about for years. Stay on the ground. Again, it's Ajayi. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And that's caught by Smith. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. A good pick up there on 20 yards. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. So the offense has it first and ten. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And complete to Zach Ertz. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. A really good pickup of 28 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. throw here out of the gun and he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20 at the 15 and they get 16 out of that one but they'll still need to convert on third that's a matchup maybe they go back to their outer third of the field as this game continues yeah i think back to my high school coach john ford he used to say when we got big plays early in a game or good plays He'd always say, follow it away, lad. Follow it away, because he'd want to come back to it later in a key situation. 
They may come back to this one a little more often than that. Didn't he say Laddie or did he say Lad? Yeah, it just depended on what he was feeling at the moment. Okay, I thought, I thought that was the guy you told me about that used to say Laddie a lot. Laddie? When you heard Laddie, he was usually in a pretty good mood. Lad? Eh. Holding offense. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. And Elliott puts this one through. And that will tie us at 3-3. Three, three. Well, he got an early chance to redeem himself, and he's able to put that one through. And he'll be happy he got a second chance so quickly after missing the first one. Now he's got the confidence back up before we even finish the first quarter. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Well, earlier we mentioned Tom Brady being the oldest quarterback to start and win a playoff game as Patriots offense works their way back onto the field, Charles. It's now, for them collectively, seven straight AFC Championship appearances. That's absolutely off the charts amazing in this era of parity in the NFL because you're not supposed to be a super team, right? Not supposed to be a juggernaut. Seven straight AFC Championship game appearances, phenomenal. And the Jags playing in their first since 1999. They start the drive on the ground with Lewis. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They try again with Lewis. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. He gives this one to Lewis. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. But when it comes to the running game, the New England Patriots, they're one of the few teams in the NFL that I don't think care much about balancing things <laughs> out. Last year, to your point, fifth in passing yardage, number 30 in the run game. What they want to do each and every week is make a game plan based on their opponent not so much their own personnel, and they try to attack that way. Now they'll throw with Brady. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forcing incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Frees up your guys elsewhere. On third and long, it's Brady. And he will find his man. That's Hogan complete. 
And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. He's such a good route runner, shows it there on third down, very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Throwing on first down is Brady. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was. All the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. This is Lewis. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. So one quarter down here in the Super Bowl. 3-3 our score. We'll return after this message. You're watching the NFL, and it's right here on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gauden, it's the Patriots in possession to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down that would have been a great catch but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in and the eighth play on this drive coming up <laughs> on play action now Brady Fletcher and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Fletcher Cox coming up the middle, gets him there for a loss of about nine. He didn't get rid of the football there, took the sack. Oh, that's easier said than done. He can't just chuck the thing sideways into the seats. No, he really can't because you're not afforded total protection as a quarterback. You have to get outside of the tackle boxes as defined by the NFL, meaning wherever your tackles operate normally, get outside of that. And the ball that you throw has to get back to at least the line of scrimmage. Otherwise, you face an intentional grounding call. Tough spot for the Pats now after the sack as Brady will lead him up third and long. Shotgun now for Brady. And right side caught Hogan. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Chris Hogan, 36 yards. And the Pats able to cash in for six. 
And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right? RAC. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. Now Steven Goskowski on for the extra point. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10-3 now. A 10-play drive that time. And it ends with a New England touchdown. Goskowski now out to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And after the field goal last time, let's see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. It got his man complete. He got 29 yards that time. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. now out of the gun and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain it's a six yard pickup and it gets him to second and four let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield success on first down huge difference as we know between second and four and second and eight and nine they run again with a giant and able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Four yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a third and one. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Here's a Jay. He needed a yard, that's what he got, and it's going to earn him a new set of downs. We ought to come up with a t-shirt and sell it that says, no indecision on third and one. And we didn't see it on that run, did we? Got his shoulders square, just got right into the line of scrimmage and picked it up. Absolutely, picked his lane, went with it, and converted. to Jay. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. 
At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of their yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again, go play action, hit them over the top. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. So it can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard. Maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. On play action, they'll throw. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked, and he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And he'll be brought down at his own 10-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not only going to tip it, I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations, big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. So we've got a challenge. Our referee's going to take another look on the tablet. He's going to be watching to see if the knee was down prior to the ball coming out. Oh, I love what you just said there. You nailed it because if the ball's shifting or moving before the knee or any other part of the body hits the ground, then that would be considered a fumble. Start off with a give to Lewis. And he'll take this one only up to about his 13-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple of yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Again, it's Lewis. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Brady to throw on second down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. 
game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback right in the face of him puts him down. New England on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and eight. Throwing is Brady on third down. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Here's Ryan Allen now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Who with a juke? And now running right through it. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Jay Ajayi works his way back onto the field. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore. Or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Charles, with that incompletion, I wanted to discuss the charitable efforts that team fan bases are putting forward right now. What about what we've seen these last couple of weeks? It's been something, hasn't it? Because it started really with the Buffalo Bills fans. Because, remember, they hadn't been to the playoffs in nearly 20 years. And they got in because of the touchdown pass Andy Dalton threw of the Bengals. So they donated over $300,000 to Andy Dalton's charity after that touchdown pass, put them in the playoffs and knocked out the Baltimore Ravens. So how about this week? What do we call this? Paying it forward? Yeah, paying it forward. Absolutely. Right? So the Bengals fans, having received that from them, they donated to the Blake Bortles charity, <laughs> the Blake Bortles Foundation, as a way of saying thank you for beating their bitter rivals, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and knocking them out of the playoffs. I like it. Sports turning into charity. All good. The Eagles on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and 15. They're going to look to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up fourth down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. So on fourth down, here's the veteran left-footed punter Donnie Jones to kick it away. Back deep, Danny Amendola for New England. This is taken at the 15. Good coverage there, an even 50-yard punt. Leads to a return of five. And the Patriots take over. First down. Over the middle, that's taken in by Gronkowski. And he's able to get up here to the 26. 
A gain of six there on first. Speaking of Gronkowski against the Titans, six catches, 81 yards, and a touchdown. It's important they've kept him healthy. It certainly is because they haven't overused him. All right, not a lot of stuff across the middle in the early going. But now, expect him to get used every which way in order to try and win another Super Bowl title. Now Brady throwing on second down. Oh, nearly picked. And maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. New England on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and four. From the gun, it's Brady. And he's got an open man. It's Gronkowski. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Brady to Gronkowski. They make it look easy, don't they? And it's a Patriot first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. They run. This is Lewis. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line they'll lose a yard and it brings up third every year i go to the combine to marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays they run like dbs and let's face it they know how to finish plays too eyes up head up run right through them. and on third down a nickel formation here defensively They go play action for White. Now it's Brady. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Here's Ryan Allen now as he's on to punt for New England. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And tough starting field position here. They'll begin the drive with the Jay. And a nice pickup as this one gets them to the 10-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three.
three yards to go on second down. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Super Bowl 52 after this. A reminder, coming up at the intermission, we'll get highlights of this Super Bowl from Larry Ridley and the crew in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. It's complete. This is Brent Salad. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25 yard line. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. There's Foles. And he goes out of bounds across the 40 yard line. 15 yards through the air and a first down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. Benefit, you got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. Fresh set of downs here. Now Foles. Well, it's caught on the right side at Smith. Stops shy of the 45 despite some powerful running. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. They'll look to throw. Gonna look deep for Jeffrey. It's caught inside the 25. And he's going to be taken down deep into Patriot territory. And give him a gain of 37. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. And now a first down following that long gain. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. He finds Aguilar over the middle. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Back to throw. And it is caught at the seven-yard line. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. And that's one of his advantages of a passer is now with his height setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. They'll set up a throw. 
This will be caught at about the five. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds right at the three. Three yards is the gain that time. Second and goal. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. Doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, they move and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his prime. And he's in. Front Eagles touchdown. Jay Ajayi, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Eagles are within an extra point of tying this thing up. And a little time left on the clock, so on the other side, they're thinking, gosh, we'd like to get that lead right back. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Here I am <laughs> going ahead and tapping out the first half. Wow, There's still time. Way. They've got to make a decision about what they want to do on the kickoff, where they want to let their return guy touch it. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. So that drive in total eight plays, and it's capped off by a touchdown run by Jay Ajayi. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Fielded about a yard deep. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. now on first down that'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining Danny Amendola the man he was trying to get it to and that'll bring up second down well, one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Looking back to the air on second down, it's Brady. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. New England on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This is third and ten. Now Brady goes underneath here to White. And they're going to take a timeout defensively. So with fourth down coming up, they go ahead and burn it and say we'll see what happens. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Boy, a call like this, certainly tougher to make in a Super Bowl, but they'll go for it on fourth down. The final shot before half for Brady. He's letting it fly for Cooks, and they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. So we've come upon halftime in the big one, the Super Bowl. 
as we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. As we look at the numbers, the only thing that really matters is that we've got a tie game. We'll have another half here to figure out who can come out on top. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. First and 10, Robert's gonna push his way to the QB here. This goes for a loss of nine. Patriots take it early in the second. Cox is gonna get the quarterback here. This ends up as a loss of nine. Later on the drive, Brady's on point with the throw, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. As they take the lead, 7-3. Eagles with the football waiting seconds of the half. is gonna stay up the middle, and he kept off the seven play drive with a score. The Eagles tied up at 10. Okay, thank you, Larry. A low scoring affair all even as we ready for this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This fielded at the two. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Out come the Eagles now as he'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Ertz over the middle. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. They run with a Johnny. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to lead to a third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say, play action. Yeah, without a doubt, I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Now, defense sold out for the run, worked out well. The Eagles on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and four. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Here is the putter Jones as he gets this one away. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. 
So here are the Patriots now. They get ready for their first possession of half number two. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. Now they'll run with Lewis. And he's going to be taken down right at about the 15-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. On second down, here's Brady. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. Brady connecting with Cooks for the Patriot first down. Defense comes to the line now, first and ten. Hey, 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 20. They go play action here on first down. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Unable to get it to Gronkowski that time. And it's second down. Well, Charles, looking at the AFC and NFC Championship games, quarterback position, you got Tom Brady, but then you got Foles, Keenum, and Bortles. I don't know that anybody saw that quartet coming. I don't think that they saw that quartet coming, right? I mean, everyone saw Brady, but the other trio, no one saw that one at all. So we did ask our man Marvin to dig up, dig up a stat for us. So Marvin, what about the other three not named Brady? What has it been like for them recently? Yes. What did he tell us? So three years prior, 2014 to 2016, Foles, Keenum, and Bortles each ranked in the bottom five of the league in lowest passer rating among QBs with 15 total starts or more. Foles the lowest, Keenum third worst, and Bortles fifth. But here they are. They're in the final four. Statistics don't matter when you win games. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On first down, Brady. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, taking a step back, and we look league-wide for a second. On Tuesday the 16th, Pro Football Writers Association named the all-rookie team. Who was on the ledger? Well, let's start with the headliners. Let's start with the Offensive Rookie of the Year, Alvin Kamara, running back from Tennessee, third-rounder with the New Orleans Saints. And Marshawn Lattimore, their first pick in the first round this past season, a cornerback of Ohio State, the defensive rookie of the year. Yeah, and Kamara shared that offensive honor with Kareem Hunt. What a year he had. I mean, when you put it all together, at one point you thought Kareem Hunt was just running away with this thing. Remember, they got off to a 5-0 start, and he was essentially setting rookie records every week he played. And then Kamara and the Saints with a late rush made it a tie. Both of them well-deserving. New England on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This will be third and five. Working from the gun, it's Brady. This is caught, it's Cooks. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Across the formation, he's got a man. That's Allen. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. 
So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend there? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to Talk to your other coverage guys and let him know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Here's Brady to throw. Dumps it off to Lewis. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Give him seven on the play, and it'll be a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Now Brady again. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Not only did they drop what looked like an interception in the end zone, they blew a golden opportunity to shift the momentum. New England on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. Here it's third and three. Brady going to try and throw on third down. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. And just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. They'll run for it with Deion Lewis. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I'm getting the sense that Fletcher Cox is making offensive linemen want to take the week off when they have to play against him. <laughs> it's a regular routine for him, isn't it? It really is. That play there, that's him all day long. Good luck trying to block him and keep him from disrupting your offense. Now Brady throwing on second down. And he can't hang on. That's definitely going to be one he wishes he had back. Incomplete in the end zone. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. This is the most important of them all, third and goal. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still third down. The offense on third down, they've hit on half of them, five for ten. They're looking at a third and goal here. From the gun, it's Brady. This is caught, Gronkowski. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. They're able to hold him to three there, and that leads to a fourth and goal. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle?
So on fourth down, Brady will yield to Goskowski for the field goal try. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Goskowski's kick is good. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. So they don't get a touchdown here in this opening drive of the third quarter, but I think you still say mission accomplished as they come away from it with the lead. Absolutely. You've got to apply the pressure here, make the other guys play catch up for a while, and now you just hope your defense can step up and protect the lead. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Play fake here on first down. His throw incomplete. Alshon Jeffrey, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Well, Charles, looking at the final four teams left in the playoffs, there's been a lot of talk about the quarterbacks. One very experienced, three not. That kind of goes for the coaches as well. You have three coaches that really haven't been on this stage. Yeah, think about it. This is the deepest three of them have been in playoff runs, right? Doug Marone with Jacksonville, Mike Zimmer with Minnesota, and, of course, Doug Peterson with the Eagles. Now... Mike Zimmer's been on Super Bowl winning teams before as an assistant coach, so he understands it, but he hasn't been the guy calling the shots. This is going to be interesting to see how those three handle the big stage. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and ten. Nice run on second and ten when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. The Eagles on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This time it's third and three. Foles. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away but could not. Kyle Van Noy able to drop it for a loss of two. And that'll bring up fourth down. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. <laughs> so possession goes over here on the punt, and that will come the offense as they take over. All right, let's discuss Deion Lewis as he gets set to go again. And we have seen a decline in the numbers. Where does the fault lie? Just him, maybe the guys up front, combination? Well, as you and I both know, it's almost always a collective deal. But in this case, I think maybe the offensive line got a little overconfident. They had blocked so well in the first half, picked up on what the defense was doing. I think we've seen an adjustment now that they have not picked up on, and now they're being a little bit overwhelmed. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage here back to the 15. It's a loss of five there, bringing up second. 
Well, forget about finding a the lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he's able to hold on to the football. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Pulling offense. So a decent game, but all for not on the penalty. That's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Now it's Brady. Quickly to Gronkowski. That's caught. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Nice play call. A little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. New England on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and 14. They go play action for White. Now it's Brady. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Vinnie Curry able to drop him for a loss of two. And that'll bring up fourth down. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, a lot for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel That's so, I could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. How much were they, a dime? <laughs> what were they? About uh, 15 cents. Here's Ryan Allen now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Fielded just inside the 30. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. He's going to wind up and air it out. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks to, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. Here's Foles. This complete left side to Aguilar. And he goes out right around the 39. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. They'll run it now, out of the gun. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the uh, field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling 
nailed it. I said go for it. Here's Donnie Jones now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. The Patriot offense now set to come back out onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That goes as a gain of 11 and a Patriot first down. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Oh, he gets lost, you can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guy's trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. One quarter remains in Super Bowl 52. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. So it'll be first down here after the run. Throwing on first down is Brady. And Gronkowski's got it, complete over the middle. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Second down now after the pass completion. They'll run it now, out of the gun. <laughs> and he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Shotgun now for Brady. He gets it into the hands of Gronkowski, complete. And he's brought down. 17 yards there for the Patriots as they've got themselves a first down. Brandon, with the way things are going with Tom Brady finding Gronk as many times as he has in this game and the team is winning, you think at some point maybe even Brady would do the Gronk dance? <laughs> well, if he does that Gronk dance, Davis, that means you have to do that Gronk dance. Trust me, partner. No one wants to see me do the Gronk dance. <laughs> Your wife? <laughs> no, no one. So here we go, first and ten now. Here's Brady. Going underneath for Lewis. And he gets it down to the 32. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that'll bring up second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Go, go, go. 
And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On play action, it's Brady. And that's complete to the right side, it's Allen. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. So the offense has it first and 10. Brady to throw again. Oh, and it's incomplete. That would have been big in the end zone if he could have held on. Instead, it's second down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Hey, 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 hey. They'll run it now out of the gun. <laughs> and able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. Nine yards on the pickup there as he'll be left with third and one. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Brady to throw on third and one. And that's going to be caught for a Patriot touchdown. Dwayne Allen from four yards out. And the Patriots add six to their lead. And he just did get those feet in there on the side of the end zone. Well done. Probably the exact size flip necessary because I think if he had another half size, that, that catch doesn't count. And he's able to get it in, and it counts for a touchdown. Goskowski for the point after. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. That time, a nine-play drive. And it's finished off by a Pats touchdown. Koski now out to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And a good return. He's across the 35-yard line, right around the 36. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now Foles. Ertz has it left side. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown.
So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Mm, close there. He caught it, just wasn't able to stay in bounds. And that's where the sideline, it was used as a 12th defender. You know, 11's legal. This one is an imaginary one, one that my college coach used to call Sammy Sideline. <laughs> Sammy Sideline can protect you at times, and in this case, that's exactly what he did for the defenders. He sets to fire deep. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down, so hang on. A big call coming on third down. Illegal touching. Offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Here's Donnie Jones now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. And the Patriots gearing up to go now. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. And not great starting field position here for the offense. They run the counter now on first down. And I don't know if he made it out of the end zone. No signal. Yes, it's a safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your punter an assist on that one. Pinned him deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt. And if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love. So a free kick situation forthcoming from the 20 as they'll punt this one away. And he fields it cleanly. Whoosh! Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and try and think with them here. Try to play field position maybe, turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense, who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> They'll try and start this drive in the air. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. They'll look to throw, and bringing it in, this is Selleck over the middle. And he'll get up near the 45, they'll spot it at the 44. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. 
Now you can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. The offense on third down tonight, they've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. They're looking at third and a few inches. This is Ajayi, and he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. The five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. But they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll set up a throw. Over the middle to Smith. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And the defense not able to get it. From a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. You probably talked about this training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. <laughs> it's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. First down, he'll drop to throw. That ball's caught. Aguilar, right side. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Four yards remaining now on second down. Now a handoff as they run left side. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Oh, partner. That play brought back memories. Watching them string it out. Letting the runner get all the way to the sideline area. But not letting him get out of bounds. They formed that picket fence and didn't allow him through. Not only that, got him for a loss as well here. And one of the reasons they lead in the fourth quarter, plays like that. Yeah, it took a little more time off the clock, making him do it that way, didn't they? <laughs> Gonna give this time to the tailback. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. A great effort there. An 18-yard touchdown run. And the Eagles move back within a couple of the lead. And there you go, nothing really too complex. Block, keep your assignments, let them run it in, they did it. Fundamental football, good blocking, beats good tackling on that play, and result, touchdown. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. Now flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. False start, offense. So now what do you do as it comes back to the seven? I think you stick with your strategy. You've already told your team you're going for two. You dial up a different play. The only saving grace, a bit more room to operate if you're deciding to throw the ball especially. So a big play for the Eagles now as they'll go for two. They're going to try and run for it. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. But he is not going to make it. It's a big play by the defense, and they're going to hold on to their two-point lead. And the failure to convert and tie the game, now the pressure shifts back to the defense. But I think it was the right play. I think it was the right call to try and tie the game there. Kick an extra point, you're still down one. What's the sense? I, I like what they did.
Elliott now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle it. Deion Lewis getting set to go again here with his guys on offense. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals, just something magical about breaking that barrier. And he's right there on the doorstep now. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On first and 10, here's Brady. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And this is caught at the 20. A big play there for New England. 54 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that and have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. And he'll give it here to his running back. He's dropped just inside the 20. A little second effort there, but couldn't find a whole lot of space. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, partner, Marvin, our number one stats guy, just handed me a little card that says he has 97 yards on the ground today. You think he's going to get the ball again? I think so. Three away from that century mark, got to have it. Yeah, and I think what they're going to call is one of his favorite runs, whatever he feels comfortable with, and what the offensive line has executed well today to try and get him over 100 yards. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It goes as a loss of six. And now third down. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Working from the gun, it's Brady. This is caught, it's Cooks. And they do get him down, but not before he reaches the four-yard line. So that one will be accepted. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. Right hash mark of 42 yard attempt. And Goskowski's kick is good. And that will push the lead up to five. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they'd gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. Koski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. This fielded at the two. The 
And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. So this offense really needs to make something happen here late in the fourth with the football. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys in plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Six yards to go here on second down. He'll look to throw. throw's going to be incomplete. The veteran Brent Selleck, the one he was looking for. And it's third down. When we start looking for big time corners, we're going to start with athleticism. But without technique, you're not going to make plays as one we just saw there. The Eagles on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This will be third and six. They'll run it now out of the gun. And some room to roam now. 25 yards to pick up there and also a first down. I definitely like the play call. You don't expect it on third and five, third and six, do you? You expect a pass play. Had a little courage there to call the run, and boy, they were successful. complete and he'll go down here right around the 23 yard line five yards on the catch there brings up second down they'll look to throw throwing over the middle and it's incomplete he was trying to get it to Jay and Johnny there out of the backfield and it's third and five well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. The Eagles on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This will be third and five. He's back to throw. And he connects with Ertz. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Trying to lob it in there, but...
but it's incomplete. Nelson Aguilar, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. They run a draw here on second down. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave them with a third down and six to go. The Eagles hustling to the line, clock rolling. But that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun, then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. What a Super Bowl this has been, and the biggest play comes now. It's fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by Deron Harmon. And he will take this all the way up past the 40-yard line. Well, I don't think we'll have to look very hard to find our play of the game. That was an absolutely monstrous big play right there. Backs to the wall. The offense has it in the red zone. Driving for the winning score. And he says, not on my watch. And that is one happy bunch on the sidelines. And we move to spotlighting Brandon Cooks. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Now a handoff here to his running back. And that time he's smothered as he's wrestled down right at the line of scrimmage. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath and now they're back out and ready. And to give this time to the tailback. And again, he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. And the Eagles are going to go ahead and take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. And the Eagles will go with an extra DB here as they prepare for a stop on third. Thinking pass all the way. Hey, Alabama, Alabama. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, They'll run it here. This is James White. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense.
Here's Ryan Allen now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Nick Foles gearing up again here to go on offense. I would imagine you want to win every game big, but if you're a quarterback in the NFL, this is the spot that you love. You've been dreaming of it since you were a kid, playing in the backyard or the front yard, wherever, where you went through those imaginary situations. Now it's real, though. What practice have you put in since the OTAs, the mini camps, preseason camp, sequence of plays, get the ball to the outside, get it out of bounds, save your timeouts, move the ball downfield to get your team in a position to win the game. And a field goal, of course, no good. They need a score. Back to throw. And he can't hang on to it. That would have sealed it. Instead, second down. I think someone's going to get in the QB ones here when he gets to the sideline. Already thrown an interception. That one should have been picked. Look, let's just be honest about it. That would be the second person in his ear because he's hearing it in the huddle right now. Not the start to the game he wanted. Like you said, the pick on the opening drive, second drive, not much better. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. There's Foles. He's going to let it fly. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. There's definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes the officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to, you and your brothers, just take the broom to you and send you out to your backyard and tell you to settle <laughs> yourselves. I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like he said, enough to warrant the flag. It was close, though. Defense has set themselves up nicely. Third and ten now. Foles. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that is incomplete. Two seconds left on the clock. So after all of this, it comes down to one final play. And just think of what it's going to be because from this distance, you've got to be prepared for everything. Hook and laterals, tip balls, you name it. A lot of laterals after a catch. Just got to be prepared, stand your feet defensively, and tackle someone. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. And it's another Super Bowl title for the New England Patriots. And when this moment comes, I think you look back at all the blood, sweat, and tears, the offseason, the workouts, training camp, week one, two, three, all building up now to say you're a Super Bowl champion. It's worth it. It certainly is, and rarely do we have a team that hoists the Lombardi Trophy that didn't have their share of bumps along the way, didn't have to face some adversity in the journey, and now they get to just enjoy it and revel in it. And all offseason, They'll be signing their autographs with Super Bowl champion underneath it. Super Bowl champs, the Lombardi Trophy is theirs, and so are bragging rights for an entire season. And what a season it has been. Feels like we have been there every step of the way. Our entire crew doing a wonderful job. Thanks to my broadcast partner, Charles Davis. For all those guys, I'm Brandon Gunn signing off. We'll talk to you next season right here on EA Sports.